What's the worst house guest experience you've had? My aunt came to visit for what was supposed to be a week or two and didn't leave for almost a year when I was a kid. She redecorated my room and even put up pictures of herself. Now the running joke in my family is to randomly leave pictures of yourself around the house when we visit people. He cranked my dad's speakers up to the max and blew them, they were from the 70s so impossible to replace or repair. Then he clogged our toilet, grabbed a bunch of grandma's quilts to sop up the water. He then tried to stop the water by violently shacking the tank, cracking the bowl and dislodging it from its base. In a panic he tried to bolt from the house, his wet feet slipped on the wood floor and he crashed into a wall leaving a nice body-sized impression. That's how my brother's friends was barred from the house. My uncle and his wife came to stay for a while. They got my room and I slept on the couch for a few months, NBD when you're a kid I guess. What actually ticked me off is that when they finally left we found out that they'd seriously messed up my room. Everything reeked of cigarettes, there were ground up peanut shells in the carpet, cigarette burns on my mattress, etc. And we couldn't figure out why the room smelled like death until my we lifted up the bed and found mummified cat crap stuck up in the shag carpeting. They either had such bad hygiene that they didn't notice the smell or they knew and they just didn't care. Edit. To everyone asking how we didn't notice the cigarette smell, my guess is that they only smoked in the room during the day when everyone was out, probably smoked out the window. My parents weren't smokers, we just figured the smell was coming from their bodies which we couldn't do anything about. Housemate had people come over, order a pizza, decide they didn't want it and refuse to answer the door so they didn't have to pay, at 4 a.m. Pizza guy could hear them through the door so kept knocking louder and louder. I eventually went to the door and opened it, then explained to the pizza guy what was going on, so that they didn't blacklist the property, and forced them to pay. As they were packing to leave the next day I noticed them trying to take some of my extra PS4 controllers by sneaking them into their bag. I'm normally an introvert but already being cranky from no sleep I lost my crap at that point. Called them a disgusting thief and told them to GTFO. That would be the girl visiting my sister-in-law who decided it would be funny to repeatedly prank call 911. I got a very angry call from the local police station saying we either stopped or they'd be sending a squad car over. Apologized profusely to the officer and thanked him for calling us first. She was not invited back to her house, she was 17 and definitely old enough to know better. My ex-wife's friend had her car break down, and our apartment was right on a bus route to her job. She was supposed to stay over for a week while she got her car fixed. After two months and a lot of warning, we packed her bags for her and put them by the door. My dad owned a business his whole life and was in the process of hiring new installers. One applicant came in from out of town and my dad, being the kind man he was, offered for him to stay in our home. When the morning came the man went to take a shower. My parents heard the water turn on and it stayed on for a really long time. After an hour and a half of running water, my mom made my dad go check on him. My dad went upstairs, picked the lock on the bathroom door, and found blood and a limp body on the floor next to the running shower. The man had overdosed, lost consciousness, hit his head on the shower side, and died. He was dead, right there on the bathroom floor that I used for 10 years. One thing is for sure, he won't be coming back to our house again. Wife's cousin stayed a couple days with us. After he left, I discovered he purchased about $60 worth of porn on DirecTV. Instead of asking where the toilet paper is, they let their kid wipe his ass with our guest towels. My old roommate told me she had a friend who had fallen on rough times and needed a spot to crash for a while. No worries, I told her. Ooh, big worries. He was a professional beatboxer, but more that that he was a professional smoker. Like, I'm fine with weed generally, but this dude was on 12 to 15 blunts a day, and would roll one as soon as he rolled his tighty whitey clad ass off of our couch. So for like 4 months, as soon as I woke up, it was nothing but clouds of white owl and brrrrmmmchkchkfrkafrkachckabrrrrmmm. He didn't fall on rough times. He was a rough time couple came for a weekend to my small apartment. Surprised that they brought three dogs and an extra friend. The puppy took a dump on my floor in the night, which nobody got up to clean. Another dog had a crate but managed to get a hold of a carpet outside of the crate, drag it in, and shred it. They also chewed up cardboard and wooden furniture. When they left, all the shredded stuff was just where it fell. One of my best buddies from high school called me up and begged for me to come get him from a town about three hours away. The idea was he would stay with us for a couple weeks while he looked for work and then get his own place. Six months later I ended up renting him a room for one month and dropping him off with his junk and wishing him well. His father had warned me he would, drain me dry, and he wasn't kidding. 
All those months he was supposedly using my vehicle to look for work he was instead going out to a local bar. Every bottle in our liquor cabinet was drained down to the last finger. She stole all of my booze, pissed on my couch, tore up the flower bed to the side of my driveway, and destroyed my guest bathroom. This all happened after I'd fallen asleep, she was a guest of a tenant, roommate and that roommate was told either her friend wasn't allowed over ever again or she'd have to find a new place to live. Ran into a guy the first used to call a friend and let him stay with me for a while as he was down on his luck. I guess we'd ran out of toilet paper so he used a washcloth and left it at the side of the toilet. Kicked him out and found out later he walked away with some of my CDs. Some mutual friends let him stay. Against my advice, they came home one day to find him passed out on the couch with his pants around his ankles. After they kicked him out they found out he'd racked up $900 in phone sex charges. Frick you Noel, you always were and always will be a piece of crap. My mom's cousin and her husband went for a short visit to our house. She was 5 months pregnant then. She and her husband didn't leave until the baby was 2 months old. We had a house sitter once who wanted to bring their own dog for the week. They assured us the dog was well behaved and house trained. This was a pretty close friend, and their house is nice and clean so we believed them. Came home to find every rug in our house destroyed. The house smelled funky when we walked in, and I immediately found wet spots on our living room rug. Lifted it up and it had more stained areas than not. Same with the kitchen, hallway, bedroom, and guest room rugs. I'm guessing this dog didn't pee outside a single time it was there. This was someone we paid to watch our house. My parents came over and started snooping through my closet while I was making tea. They found some sex toys and proceeded to get mad at me for having them. In my own house, in my own bedroom, they wouldn't have found them if they would have behaved like normal people. My dad's friend pissed in the corner of the guest room and asked for money from everyone who happened to walk by him. I was on my honeymoon with my husband and we let his dad stay at our house, but said he had to be out by the time we got back. We let him know when we were on our way home and expected him to be gone. We get back, he was gone but had not gotten his stuff out of the house. On top of that, he trashed the place like a group of teenagers, empty pizza boxes and trash laying around. He came back and stayed around for a bit and asked me if I was mad at him. Like of course I'm mad. What do you expect? I had surgery and was on bed rest for a week. I asked my cousin, who was living with me at the time, to keep an eye on me, as I was on heavy painkillers. I stayed on the couch and let her use my bedroom. When I recovered, I found used hair weave piled up on clean towels in the bathroom cabinet, a douche nozzle behind my nightstand, trash piled all the way up the wall in the kitchen, dirty dishes everywhere, a plate of rancid food in the microwave, ketchup and mustard smeared on the floors, and she had stolen a bunch of clothing and CDs, along with one of my iPhone charges, she had a Windows phone, and she poked a hole in my $2,500 sleep number bed. I kicked her ass out immediately. When our son was born, my mother-in-law came and stayed on our couch for two weeks to help. In the two weeks she was there, she did nothing to help. Dishes, laundry, feedings, nothing, and our poor son had real trouble feeding those first few months. We couldn't get him to eat well, and it didn't help that my mill was there the whole time, staring at us while the baby didn't eat. After two weeks, my father-in-law was going to join us, so my mill baked a pie. For him, that's why I always said that if we had another one, I'd be on the doorstep with a shotgun until the baby was six months old. Never even got to spend any time in this apartment. I agreed to rent an apartment with my younger sister on her road to recovery from drug use, and we'd all thought she was doing well. I paid for the first month's rent and deposit, which is standard. She moved in a week early, because I was working night shift and the whole process started on a Monday. That weekend I got to move in, I found out my debit card was locked out because she stole it and attempted to withdraw money too many times. It didn't get any better after that, sadly. Oh this is a pretty good one. So I had a really old, good friend call me and tell me they needed a place to stay for maybe a few days or a week when I lived in the Pacific Northwest. I of course said yes. Then she told me her girlfriend was coming too. Okay, great. They show up, and when they get to my porch she tells me her girlfriend has strep throat. At first I think, okay, whatever. But then I stop and think, isnt that highly contagious? But they are already here. So I just kind of start thinking to myself that I'll have to somehow keep them to my spare bedroom and sterilize the crap out of everything. But then I am just wondering why my friend didn't tell me in advance, or if they don't know how contagious it is. Like if my girlfriend had strep, I'd go get a hotel and not subject my friend to that. After about a day, my friend tells me via text she has to leave. Which at first I am relieved, but then she asks if her girlfriend can just stay at my place. I don't know her, I've never met her in my life. 
I tell her I have another couple that need to come stay with me, which was true, and that I am not comfortable housing someone I don't know who is sick. She says that is fine, but then when she comes to get her stuff she acts all pissed and says, well see you sometime, maybe. And I don't hear from her for a long long time after. Kinda fricked up she put me in that situation tbh. My gf was pregnant and we were taking a little vacation. We let two friends who are brothers use our house while we were gone on the condition that they maintained the yard and garden. First they borrowed the truck which wasn't a big deal but they immediately wrecked it, driving head on into a garbage truck. Then our very best friend stopped by to borrow something and they told her to frick off. They found some hidden cash, maybe $100, and stole it. They broke plates. We came home to find a pile of soaking wet towels and linens which had grown mold and they all had to be replaced. Believe it or not they did make an attempt to mow the lawn but somehow broke the lawnmower and then never fixed it or mowed or watered anything and many flowers were dead. I had been collecting exotic varieties of heliconia there on the big island of Hawaii and they were all dead. Some of those flowers were worth $80 or $100. So we come home from vacation and the boys have vanished without a trace and won't ever, ever answer our calls again. We are five months pregnant with no vehicle and a trashed house. I think the worst part was that we really did think of them as friends but then they ghosted us like that. Like we were disposable and our pregnancy and our lives didn't matter. A former friend of ours called us and said that her house caught on fire. So naturally we offered a soft place to land while she was dealing with the fallout. So we went and picked her up, brought her home, and got her set up for the night. The next day, she grabbed what she could from her apartment and brought it over to our house. My wife washed all of her clothes, which by the way smelled the way you'd expect from being in a house fire. Unfortunately, that scent is really hard to get out, so our house smelled of fire for a long time as my wife was washing the clothes multiple times. Eventually, we realized she was not trying at all to get her life back in order. She also wasn't helping at all at our house, with getting her things together. She apparently just decided that she was going to apparently just stay with us and coast I guess. Ultimately she then started being really critical of anything we did, tried to start drama, and was generally unpleasant to be around. What finally broke the camel's back was that I returned one day to find her and someone we had never met before smoking in our front porch. Not really a big deal but it was odd that she didn't let us know that she was inviting anyone into our house. The next day I went to take my Adderall that I had just filled and noticed that there were like five left from the prescription. Her and her friend helped themselves to my meds. After that she announced that she was going to stay somewhere that she was welcome, and that we could throw the clothes and items away that we had at our house because she didn't want them anymore because they smelled too much like smoke. The best came after she moved out. We read a story about the fire in the newspaper about the cause of the fire. She had caused it by smoking on the back deck of her apartment by carelessly not putting the cigarette out. We never really saw her again, she tried to make contact but we just noped out. She ended up moving in with some of our other friends, which we tried to warn them about, and ended up almost accidentally killing their dog due to carelessness before being kicked out by them. Yeah, she sucked. A guest took a dozen eggs from my pantry and cooked it and served it to her kid after refusing to allow the kid to eat a dish I cooked for them. I think I had an older post about it somewhere here in Reddit about it. Husband a friend came for Xmas since she was out of town. He brought the dog, who had diarrhea. Dog humped our dog for hours till our dog was covered in ST. Husband spouted racist crap and my kids laughed at him. Had to wash our dog in the kitchen after he left. Friend divorced now. A friend I haven't seen in a year or so called me last weekend wanting to catch up so he came over. I didn't realize he was blackout drunk until he walked in and I didn't realize how to defuse the situation. It started with him taking a crap in my bathroom and instead of flushing it he just put both seats down. Went into my fridge to grab a craft IPA that I have been saving for a rainy day and drank it. Went outside and out of nowhere he starting saying the n-word? He's never been racist as far as I know. At this point I told him to get the frick out nicely or calm down but I also didn't want him to crash his car home as he lives an hour away. He then said he's going to go get cigarettes so I offered to drive him. As soon as we're down the road he yells at me to pull over because he has to pee. Again calling me the n-word for no apparent reason. I told him to just wait 3 minutes and he takes out his D and puts it into his beer can and just pees everywhere and then throws it outside. By this time I'm livid and he grabs my arm to apologize but his hand was soaked in piss so he basically just wiped it all over me. I knew I was going to punch him in the face if I didn't get to the gas station so once I got there I told him to go inside. When he went in I peeled out of there and called his GF saying she needed to pick him up from that gas station. 
I took a shower and an hour later his GF calls me and says he's in the backseat of a cop car because he called 911 asking for cocaine. Needless to say that's the last time I'll be seeing him. Well, this one happened a few years ago? But the husband of my great aunt came to visit us, mind you he was like 80 something years old, so he goes to the bathroom to do his bassinus, and he comes down, now he smells a little bit, but we all brush it aside then when he sits down and after a while gets back up to leave, you can see crap stains on the sofa. Not only that but my mom then goes upstairs and finds the bathroom full of crap, not full on crap but a bunch of it was sprayed in the walls etc to this day we haven't spoken about it and that man passed away around a year ago. I was 23, just signed a lease for a duplex with my girlfriend. Got new furniture and a new computer then my brother shows up one with a broken foot and says he can't work so he stays with me while. He acts grateful and I had a spare bedroom that was using as an office. My new computer was in the room. He downloaded so much porn it crashed the hard drive. Had to wipe the hard drive and reinstall Windows. I put a parental block on the computer after that. He finally got a job and pretty much spent all his money on drugs. I would ask him to pitch in money for food, bills and would be totally delusional saying he gave $500 last week. I think I got $100 from him in the 6 months he was there. He got fricked up on pills and passes out and pissed himself on my brand new couch. Then tried to fight me when I yelled at him and said he had to pay for it to get clean. I told him to get out at that point then it was a nightmare. He would send threatening messages to me saying how he was going to kill me. Cops got called. Cops took some statements. Wrote down the text messages and didn't do crap at the time. Three months later they arrest him and our mom calls me saying it's all my fault and I need to drop the charges. Needless to say I'm not real close with my family these days. Oh yeah, I had a bed in the office that totally covered in piss after he stayed there. Also found a duffel bag full of porn in the room and a few dozen little baggies with coke residue in them. In my case I was a house guest and the hosts were the worst. I stayed in a home with three other girls while we did work for the church. While it was very generous of the host family to have us. They sold Amway and so we had to sit through a sales pitch one night. We slept in the basement on the floor which was carpeted but infested with fleas from the numerous dogs. One night for entertainment we made balls of dog hair and watched to see how many fleas hopped on it. When they were finished cooking a meal, they left any leftovers in the pan until the next meal and then they just heated them up. So last night's burger had been sitting on the stove for 24 hours, reheated and served again. Is that even a thing? My, now ex, BFS friend. Took over our bedroom I came home from work to find him on our bed with his dirty socks on our pillows as he was on his computer. Would constantly sit in between my BF and I. Would eat on the couch or in our bed and leave crumbs. If I attempted to talk to my BF he would immediately interrupt me to say something. If we went to go out for anything he would invite himself along and take shotgun. Whether I was driving or BF was driving. Would leave trash all over our car. The kicker though. Bringing his girlfriend around who we found out later was a minor. He was 19, she was 15, not freaking cool. I sometimes think the best part of the breakup was not dealing with him anymore. I reconnected with a friend who was moving back to town. There was a live outdoor music event going on that evening and invited her over before my friends and I went to the event. She asked if I could pick her up. Once she was at my house, we were all having a few drinks, she disappears. I find her in the kitchen, she literally has everything out of my fridge and is cooking. When I say everything, I had just gone to the store and gotten fresh veggies, chicken breasts, ground beef. I was stocked up for a week or two. I ask her what she's doing and she tells me that she's been a chef at some fancy restaurant for a while and wants to cook dinner for everyone. At this point, WTF, but although I'm pissed the food is already being cooked so I might as well get a meal of it then deal with everything. K a few moments later when she gashes her finger open with a knife. Blood everywhere, including all over the food on the stove. Once I get her finger wrapped up, she asks me, and I quote, Do you have a sewing kit? I'll fix this right up. No is the obvious answer to that. I notice that she has gotten some blood on her dress and mention that to her. She asks me to take her home so she can change before we leave. Immediate, yes. As I'm driving her across town, she calls her mom and chews the poor woman out. Yelling at her to get a bucket of water and baking soda ready to soak the dress. We finally get to her house and she could sense what I was thinking. She asks if I'd wait for her to change and she'd only be a moment. The second she shuts the door to my truck, I pull off. She then jumps on my hood and starts screaming about two tall boy bud lights that she left at my house and that I'm a thief. I finally get her off the hood of the truck and simply tell her she's not invited, she destroyed all my food for over a week, and I never wanted to talk with her again. Quick edit. The food she was cooking looked and smelled terrible. 
She was not a chef, she was not a good cook. I ended up cleaning up when I got home and whatever she was making was going to be uneatable, just a cross mix of chicken, beef, and every spice from my cupboard. Think, 10-year kid unattended in the kitchen, making dinner, 